Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we are going to do an unboxing of Conflict of Heroes, Awakening of the Bear, Operation Barbarossa 1941, the third edition. So I've done some stuff with the second edition before, including the solo system, the firefight generator, but had not gone into the third edition yet. So I'm gonna take a look at this one, what you get in this box, and then later I'm gonna do another video um, uh, showing second edition, third edition side by side. So you can, uh, if you find a second edition, you can decide if you want to get the third or the second, so on and so forth. So well, let's crack it open, see what you get. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. I have long been a fan of Academy Games and the, and the stuff that they're doing, uh, and they're branching out into non-war games. Uh, still strategy, still track, still tactical, but uh, they're expanding this. But they've done they did Freedom, the Underground Railroad. They did uh, the uh, the 1812, the 1775 game. Um, some really good. Uh, some good history games um, and and you know branching out into science fiction and fantasy as well uh, and they're branching out into science fiction as well so excited to see what they've changed from two to three so let us take a look see all right so the first thing I'm noticing is you get these uh, what we would normally call tile spacers but these are probably specially made um, probably to delineate boards, uh, delineate, usually you use them to delineate like, you know, if you have a limited gameplay, but interesting to see what those are for. Yeah, so we get these trays to hold your counters, and there's three of them. So you can have the Russians, the Germans, and then all your markers. We have our dice. Get those here. So we have regular six-sided dice you get two of those you get a black one and a white one and they're just normal and they whoop, they're normal and they do work hey craps and then we've got ten-sided die there's two of those and if i'm not mistaken these are special okay so i do know that when the solo system came out um, it had a very, very unique way of determining if a counter, if a unit was spent, because the AI could, op could operate, excuse me, could um, activate any unit at any time until they were spent. And then so could the player against the solo. Myself and several people on a Board Game Gulag thought that that was just amazing. Because the old way was seven action points or a variable number of action points, but you basically activated one unit and uh, until they were done. But you did little micro moves. So you didn't say, I've got seven action points and I'm going to move seven action points worth of moves. You moved one hex and deducted that number of action points. And then you did the next thing, you know, then it alternated. So it was a staccato, is the way I called it, just, you know move 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 but these micro moves um so anyway the action uh the uh, spent check system from the solo game basically had you take an action and then based on the amount of action points you spent on that action you then flipped a card and determined whether the unit was spent so the riskier the move you made the more the odds were that you were going to be spent or the more costly move not risky the more costly move you make uh, the, the higher chance you were spent, and we loved it. I mean, we thought, oh, this is great for player. You just play both sides yourself, or playing against another opponent. Just you know, it's it, it kept kept the options open. And there, you know, a lot of people go, oh, I've had these times where, uh, you know, the Germans just, you know, never got spent. They just kept, you know, they just moved all the way across the board. It's like mathematically, that's pretty impossible. Um, but it could happen. It theoretically could happen. So they like that so much that we, they basically have included these dice now and in, written into the core rules, the spent check system. And then while this is a 10-sided die, it is not 
numbered 0 through 9 or 1 through 10. It is, let's see, we got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, and 3, 5, 1, 7, 4. So uh, you got two ones. So you got two ones, you got one, two, you got a three, you got a four, so you got two threes, another four. Uh, the distribution on there is pretty, pretty solid based on the cards. So they've, they have now made that. They have now officially in third edition made that the standard. Instead of seven action points, instead of random action points, you just take an action and then you roll one of these die. And then based on what you roll, you get to uh, the units either spin or not. And that is brilliant. I mean, that, that system just, that just changed this game. They just made it so much more fun to play. So I still prefer the cards, but that's a different issue. But, but you do get two dice. So you get a die for each player to use. And that's pretty cool. So you get three of these trays uh, with their nice lids. So there are, and they're grooved now. They are grooved so the, the counters will fit in and lean back kind of thing. So uh, they're made to lean. So that'll help you when you're sorting out your counters. Um, so you get those are empty. And then we've got one here with a deck of cards. So you got three trays. And then there's an ad for this OLO expansion and the mission generator, which my understanding is will work with the third edition. There may be some changes you got to make or adjustments you got to make. But when I was talking to Uwe, he was Uva, Uva. When I was talking to Uva, he was indicating that the solo was really the beginning of the third edition. So, so what we have here in your deck of cards, we've got these we've got weapon cards and battle cards. We've got a few weapon cards. A lot more battle cards and weapon cards. These are very thin though, so you're probably going to want to sleeve these. So this gives you the information about the different weapons that are available and how they work, so more reference cards. And then you have the battle cards, and you got an ad for this whole expansion. And the battle cards that give you special actions with your command points or whatever. So, the deck of cards there. They are a nice... So they're very thin. But they kind of remind me of the cards from uh, Too Many Bones in that they feel a little plastic instead of paper. Maybe they're just coated. I wouldn't want to bend one, but so I would still probably uh, sleeve them. And they are standard size, so that helps a lot. And then we have some more weapon cards in here. We're not going to open those. These are some special weapon cards. And these look to be the same. I don't know why they're included there. We'll put those there. We got a desiccant pack that you do not want to eat or let pets get a hold of. All right. So then we've got reference cards and rule books, all in a nice plastic bag. So we got we got a lot of ways to kill people here. We've got desiccant. We've got plastic bags that can suffocate you. So you just got to be really careful in life. So, but if you wear a mask, I guess that'll take care of everything, right? Okay, so we've got a round tracker. So the artwork's been updated. It's pretty cool. So we've got your victory points and your mission round, little little cards, card stock, uh, command action points. And here's your spent check reference table that I was telling you about with the die. So the action costs, if you spend one action point, it's, there's a 20% chance you're spent. If you spend uh, seven action points, it's a 100% chance you're gonna get spent. So you can't do really anything too radical. So that's pretty cool. And then caps, you can spend to lower the action cost of the actual, so you, that you're rolling against. So if you have your caps, which are your command action points, you can use those. So you get four of those, because you can play this up to four players. And then we got the mission round. And then we've got more ads for Storms of Steel. I'll have a video of unboxing of that soon. And other games. Uh, yeah, 1775, 1754, 1812, Vikings, a lot of history going on there. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in this box. All right, so then we've got our terrain uh, effects. So they've got our terrain effects charts here. 
single-sided reference sheets, and the firepower, the unit reference card here. Uh, your command turn actions, your common turn actions, combat, how it works, and it's single-sided as well. So it might have been nice, just just analyzing it, they'd printed this like this. Oops. If they'd printed it like that on both sides and given you two of them, that might have been a nice touch. All right, so then we have our Awakening the Bear mission book. It's glossy, it is 40 pages. And these are the different missions. There are, looks to be 16 missions in the, in the book. It's telling you about Operation Barbarossa, a little history lesson there, and then how to set up the various missions. Full color map, where the counters go. All right, so you get the mission book. And you get the third edition rule book, which is probably out of date. <laughs> because they are really good about updating their rule book online. So you, when you get this, you might want to check online and see if they've got a, uh, uh, an updated version. So, but anyway, as it comes, it's a 40 page rule book, nicely indexed, tells you where to find things if you need to look them up. And I do believe it was written originally to teach you the game and you go through it and you stop at a certain point, you play certain scenarios, or maybe I'm mistaken. So, full color, full color, lots of visual, visuals on how things work, so on and so forth, group actions. Cool, 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 cool. All right, and then our map boards. And they do a really good job with their maps. I, I like theirs a lot. So they are, um, they are double, not double-sided, what's the word I'm looking for? Double, they're folded. They're one fold and they're geomorphic. So you can put them together, but they are single-sided unless you just want to play in total fog of war here. Lovely artwork, really, really nice. Really, really nice graphic design on these. They do, they do a great job on these. And then this is map board number four. Waking the Bear has uh, one through five, I believe, on the map boards. And let's go with number three, right? Yes, number three. You can see it up in the upper corner here. This is number three. So there's some hills. They're clearly defined with the uh, topographic lines, but then they're also, you know, the shading, the artwork, you know, makes it clear what's a hill, what's a valley. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Number two. And finally, number one. All right, so five of those. And then our counter sheets. And there are six sheets of counters. It's interesting, I guess that when they designed them, they designed them independently this side and this side, but when they print them. So it says sheet two of six, but this is one of six. So it's like one, two, so on and so forth. But they come as basically three sheets. And the cool thing is uh, Academy was doing rounded counters before rounded counters were cool. I mean, they've had these, these actually seem thicker than the ones I've had before, but they have, you know, pre-punch, pre-rounded. You don't have to do anything. Just punch them out and play. Uh, you don't need a quarter rounder. You don't need anything. These actually may or may not be bigger than previous versions, but I'll have to do that when I do the comparison video. I'll have to check that. But you got, for those of you that like your armor, you got, you got armor in them, you got units. So we got Germans, we got Russians. We got uh, fortifications that go in. We got smoke markers. They, they put a lot of information on the counters too. It's really nice that you can just pretty much play with what's, you know, buy what's on the board and uh, you're, you know, you're, you're golden, so. Uh, and then the last one is uh, the damage. We've got infantry damage and we've got uh, uh, vehicle damage. You got your cap markers. You got control markers. Two sides, 
German Russian. And more smoke markers, victory point counters, wrecked vehicle counters, so on and so forth. So that's awesome. Looking forward to, to trying out the third edition. And you get an empty box here. So if you pick up the third edition, Conflict of Heroes, Awakening the Bear, Operation Barbarossa, 1941 from Academy Games, designed by Ua Eichert and Gunter Eichert, you're going to get three, three sheets of counters. Large, large, beautiful counters. You're going to get five double panel map boards that are geomorphic. You're going to get a rule book. That way you're going to get a mission book. You're going to get two single-sided reference cards. Which you can laminate together if you want to. You're going to get advertising. You're going to get a mission round and victory point tracker, as well as a four command action point trackers. And you're going to get three of these awesome trays for storing your counters for and your cards. And speaking of cards, you're going to get all these battle cards. Let's take these, put these in here. Battle cards. And you're going to get these weapons cards. And more advertising. And some more weapons cards. Put this on top. So they're still in the plastic baggie. You're going to get five tile spacers. Curious about that. And two of these spent check dice. And two regular dice. In there. And that is everything you get. Conflict of Heroes Awakening the Bear, third edition from Academy Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!